Hey everybody, Ryan here. It's been a little bit, you know, I, like I said in the last video, my job's just been really, really busy. It's been awesome though. I love it. I love it. I love it. But um, I, like I said last video also, that I'm going to have the second part of the update from last month. And I had to wait for a couple of the things to get in. And I mean, when I mean last month, I actually mean August, because it's just now September. So this is from part two of all the the purchases that I made in August. And I had to wait for some of them to come in the mail and all that kind of stuff so I could watch them and stuff and you know, you know how that is. And so I am coming back at you with a, another update. And so this will be the video that will start out um, I think over the next you know Labor Day weekend I'm going to try to get one you know video out a day. Um, just some stuff, some favorites and everything I just want, I've been wanting to do but I haven't had time. Also I want to review season one of Seinfeld and I know some of you guys are waiting for that and I'm also still thinking about the next film I'm going to analyze uh, so if you have any suggestions please feel free to throw some at me in the comment and also remember I have started a new Facebook fan page and it's not really like a fan page where you guys go it's just going to be you know bragging you know about you know movies I bought or whatever like that it's just it's going to be kind of like my own Facebook page and I'm just trying to keep personal Facebook page um, you know private like I don't really want a whole bunch of people that I barely know you know just being I'm really private when it comes to my real personal life personal life on Facebook and so I'm just trying to keep them separate unless I know you on YouTube and some of you guys out here on YouTube I'm already friends with and that's sweet. I'm glad. And so, if we're not really good, you know, we don't really know each other, but you just want to, you know, maybe we get to know each other, just like my Facebook fan page, and I use it just as much as my real Facebook. So, in fact, sometimes I usually do more movie stuff on there than not. And so, check it out if you want. If not, no bother. You don't have to worry about it. But, um, I'll go ahead and get started. Alright, this film, I was really, really, really excited when it came out. I just had to wait a while because I didn't have any money. And so, I finally was able to get some money this month, and that's why I was able to do a big load of Blu-rays and stuff. But, um, this is a DVD, because I didn't really feel the need to get the Blu-ray. It would have been way more expensive, and, you know, it's not like it's a newer movie. But, I'm glad I got the DVD, because it is breathtaking. I mean, it's perfect. I mean... I don't see how it could get any better than this, which I'm sure on Blu-ray it is better. But it's The Great Dictator and, um, you know, Charlie Chaplin, The Criterion. And this film is amazing. And what I love about the cover is that it's, you know, you can look at it like that. And you can see, um, you know, the Jewish, bo the Jewish man. You know, the tramp. But the thing is, is that a lot of people think this is like another tramp role for Chaplin, but his last outing as the tramp was in modern times, which came out before this. So even though some people are misunderstood and think he's the tramp in this, he's not. He just kind of um, has the same kind of you know, caricature as the tramp, which is, you know, which is okay because it's just as funny. So I like looking at it like that, but then when you flip it, it's him as... Um, Hinkle, which is like a caricature of Adolf Hitler, and this movie is an entire satire on Nazis and stuff, and it's really, really good. It's such a funny movie. It's a great film, and I recommend it. Um, one of the discs is actually still in my Blu-ray player, so that's why it's not in there, but sweet packaging. It has the double double cross background, you know, Instead of a swastika, it's the double cross. You know, great, great essay book. It has an essay of the reaction to the film. You know, some of the audience's reaction and critics, which was pretty fair. But, you know, some people, you know, maybe didn't care for it. But it has, like, an essay of, of Charlie Chaplin himself writing a reaction to the public reaction of the film. And it's just a very interesting you know, perspective, and it's just a great set, so definitely get this. The next one has been the one thing, 
if there was one thing I could get this whole year, this would have been it. And I got it. And I did an unpackaging or a showcase video for it. And it is the Lord of the Rings Blu-ray Extended Edition set, 15 disc. And this set is just amazing. Opens up like that. And then in here, it has each of the films. And it has five discs per set. And the film itself is spread out over, un over two discs, so it's uncompressed, and it's just like the perfect picture quality and the sound quality. And the film, the two discs for the film are the Blu-rays. The, um, you know, the supplemental features and special features disc are DVD because they were filmed in standard definition, and I understand why they didn't want to put on a Blu-ray. They didn't want to waste, you know, I guess they didn't want to waste. So it's awesome. It comes with these little booklets that's kind of like a map through the set. Here's the two Blu-rays and disc, special features disc, and that's kind of how it is the entire, you know, the entire way. Here's the two towers. It's just amazing. And here's Return of the King. And this is the one thing that I've been wanting to get all year, but it was always so expensive, but I finally got it. And it's just awesome. So this is definitely my favorite thing I've gotten so far. Me and my wife are planning to, because these are like some of our favorite movies, and so we planning, we're planning on maybe getting some of the family over for a day and just kind of going through the entire collection. You know, pop them in the Blu-ray player and just have fun, you know, chill out. So, I love that. The next thing is something I've been wanting because it's by my favorite director, and that's Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. Amazing, amazing Blu-ray transfer. Great film. If you want to hear more about it, I did a quick review of it, the video I did before this, so check it out. And, you know, here's the... It's just such a great film. Oh, and it also includes Killer's Kiss, which was Stanley Kubrick's film they did before this. It's considered, you know, his... He did one called Fear and Desire, but um, he hated it, and so he kind of... You can't really buy it. And when you can buy it, it's like extremely low quality. Stanley Kubrick did everything he possibly could to make sure that movie is not going to get released. And I've never seen it. So if you've seen it, Fear and Desire, let me know how it is. I really would like to see it one day. But, you know, Stanley Kubrick always, you know, considered um, um, Killer's Kiss his, like, first serious take as a director. Like, that was, it was just him and... It's very good. I think it's a great film, highly underrated, and I think it finally has the great high-def release included on this Blu-ray. And, you know, a lot of people say The Killing is his first masterpiece, but I really, really loved Killer's Kiss. And it's like only an hour and seven minutes. It's just a great film, and it's quick, and it has a lot of, you know, early Kubrick um, trademarks, you know, some of the tracking shots and everything. I mean, it's just awesome film, so definitely you should check that out. The next one is, in middle school it was like my favorite film, because I just loved it so much, and um, I don't really consider it a horror movie, just because, and that's The Exorcist. I don't consider it a horror movie at all. I consider it a psychological thriller, because there's no, there's really no on-screen murders, like there's not a, sla a serial killer going around, and when there is... A, a death on screen you don't see it and it's not overly graphic it's just um, for those of you who don't know it's about a girl who is having all these psychological issues and they start to think you know that they get all the options and they realize that she's possessed by a demon and the film starts out with a priest over in Iraq just doing some you know work over there and he uncovers a little statue of um, just an idol a, like um, a demon idol that was, you know, a couple thousand years ago. And he then goes back to the United States, and he, you're like, okay, what was that about? And he doesn't even pop back up into the movie until later, and then he's called to perform the exorcism on this girl. And it's actually the demon that he found in Iraq that 
um, is possessing this girl. You know, he's saying he's the devil, but he's not. He's just a demon. And I just love the film. It's very... It's, it's, some of the scenes are kind of over the top, but it's a very realistic portrayal of that kind of situation. Um, I don't really dig all the new exorcism-type movies at all now. I really... This is the only one I like. I hate The Exorcist Part 2, which everybody else pretty much hates too, but this is just a well-made film. Um, William Friedkin directed it, and William Peter Blady did the screenplay based off his own novel. And I just think it's such brilliant filmmaking, and it's great, but it's very intense towards the end, especially with the girl... Um, you know, being possessed and everything. It's just such a great film, and I'm sure everybody's seen it. But I wanted to give my take on it. And it's the Blu-ray. You could get the Blu-ray Blue Book set, which is great. But I didn't really need all that other stuff, and especially since I was on a budget. I was like, you know what? I'm so this is just the extended director's cut. Um, so, but it it's pretty good in high def. It's very grainy and. I was slightly disappointed in the transfer, the picture quality, but it's still perfect because um, I was disappointed but that's because I wasn't, I didn't really realize because it's been so long since I've seen this that that's how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to have that grainy feel, the dirty kind of look, the grittiness of certain scenes, but it's still great, great film. Finally, I have the next one, The Shining on Blu-ray, which for those of you guys who just subscribed to me recently, you will soon find out that Stanley Kubrick is my all-time favorite director. And recently I traded in a lot of the DVDs and I transferred to Blu-ray. And now I have every single one of his films that are available on Blu-ray. Except for Spartacus, which I have on DVD because of the Criterion DVD version. And this movie looks breathtaking on Blu-ray. The tracking shots, everything. It's just amazing. And I just love this film. It's a great film. And yeah. So great. All right. The next two films I got as a um I bought from Steve aka Big Toe 512, uh a master criterion director. I've called him the John Cassavetes of YouTube. Very awesome guy. If you guys I'm going to have this link down below. Please go check him out. He needs... I mean, he is very undersubbed. You guys definitely need to go check him out. And he's real down to earth, you know, very um, genuine on the camera. He doesn't have, like, a fake persona or everything. So definitely check him out. And, and be sure you sub him. And he did a series of videos on Luis Buñuel. And I've seen a couple of his things. I own one of his films that he did with... Um, Salvador Dali, and I wasn't really the biggest fan of him until I saw the discreet charm of the bourgeoisie, and then I started visiting some of his other films, and he's a great filmmaker, very surreal, and I love the surrealism type films, but this criterion is out of print now, and it's very hard to get, and Steve found it on eBay. And he offered it, he bought two copies and he offered the other one to me, so I bought it from him. And it's awesome that he offered me this because this film is so amazing and it's hilarious that it's out of print. And I couldn't get it, especially for this, you know, it's like perfect, like brand new. And so, thanks Steve for saying this to me. This is an awesome film. And I'm starting to get into some of his other films, you know, Benwell's other films. And... He's just a great filmmaker. I am glad I didn't just because I didn't. I don't really dig some of his, you know, belief system. I mean, he is an atheist and stuff, but um, I felt like some of his films just kind of over. They didn't offend me, but they were just, you know, I didn't really care for him. I didn't really like him personally. Really, I don't know. It's weird, but I didn't just stop there. I went and started, you know, watching his films and. Overall, I'm very happy with him. I just don't care for some of his stuff. But this film's amazing. It's about a group of people that are trying to have dinner, basically. And for some reason, it just never works out. And it's just like attempt after attempt to these group of people to eat dinner. You know, one time they go to a restaurant and, you know, 
there's a funeral going on, like somebody in the restaurant died. And so there's a funeral next door. So they're like, oh, okay, we're not going to eat here. And then they went to a friend's house, and the friend's like, you weren't supposed to come here tonight. You're supposed to come yesterday. And, or, you know, it's not even for another week or whatever. And it's just these people just trying to eat, and it's hilarious, but it has like a surreal kind of um, take on it. Each of the scenes where they're trying to eat is very episodic. Like, it, it's not um, meant to be a plot plot, you know. It's just an awesome film. And also, Steve sent me a thing of popcorn, which I've already eaten. And so I can't show you that because it's in my stomach. But he also, as a surprise, sent me Videodrome, which is a great, great um, film. If you're not a fan of David Cronenberg, he's awesome. He did The Fly the remake of The Fly, which was amazing. Um, he's just a great filmmaker, and he's different, which is, he has his own unique way of making film, and it's an awesome film. I'm not going to talk about it, because I don't want to blow it for anybody, but they also have a Criterion release of this, and I think either they just did, or they're getting ready to come out with the Criterion Blu-ray. So, I might eventually get the Criterion down the road, but, um, I don't know, this is a film I just like Watching, I wouldn't. I don't think I want. I don't even think I'd want to see it in high def because the grittiness is just added to by the DVD. You know, if you have a high def TV, then it's gonna not look as good. But I think that's good for this type of film. And so, thank you, Steve, so much for saying this to me. I cannot believe I don't even own it, but I don't. And so, thank you so much. You guys definitely need to go check out um, Big Toe Five Twelve, Steve. Awesome, awesome guy. He just recently took part in that Criterion 50% um, off sale at Barnes & Noble, and he loaded up on so many titles. I mean, I think he got over... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, in the comments, but didn't you get, like, 100 titles? Or is that your total Criterion collection spine numbers? But anyways, I think that's it for everything, and so be sure you check out Steve's channel, be sure you like my Facebook fan page, Ryan Cinematic Obsessions. And I'm going to be, you know, getting on that Seinfeld video and doing a couple other things over the weekend. But I hope you guys have a great, great weekend if you don't catch, you aren't able to catch my other videos. But anyways, remember, there's three ways of doing things. The right way, the wrong way, and the chat away. See you guys later.